Okay. So hopefully you all should be able to see my screen. So this program, the senior internship program is scheduled to run April 26th to May 21st. So it's essentially your seniors, um, senior students last four weeks of their senior year. Okay, so what, what we try to do is provide an authentic real world opportunity for our seniors where they can take everything they learned over the last 13 years of school and hopefully apply it somewhere, even for a month and get some great experience. Um, I've been really fortunate to run this program for the past six years. And I've been really fortunate to watch it grow from a pilot of 17 students um, until last year, right before COVID-19 hit. This is like the anniversary week, right? We actually had 100% of our students signed up for an internship program last year for an intern opportunity last year. Um, with that being said, that we've had over 500 students in six years complete this program. And you can just see, I'm not going to read all these statistics for you, but I think it really speaks to the quality of work that our students produce and how the program has grown over the years. And there's countless firsthand stories I can share with you about the su success of the program and the opportunities, even in four or six weeks that these interns have provided for our students. Uh, beyond just those statistics, I, I hope, I, I don't have to sell you too much on the program, but if you're still on the fence, if you're undecided, like Marcucci, why should I do this? I'm unsure of this or I'm uneasy, I'm anxious about it. Those are all great things. Um, it's great to be anxious about things and it, it, it's great to trust your gut at the, for these things. But when you get beyond that, um, here are the things it can really provide for you. From the onset, it starts to build a professional network. You start to gain these authentic experiences. You get to go beyond the kind of the Sutton bubble as we call it. And in four weeks, my people, uh, you could be in an internship and in that four weeks of time, you could say, you know what, this is exactly what I want to do. I want to get in the field of sports management. I know working for the Woo Sox or the Worcester Pirates or the Worcester Bravehearts, which are all real internships, by the way, um, that's definitely for me. Or equally as effective, you could do those four weeks at the Worcester Pirates and say, you know what, what I thought sports management was and, and what it is and maybe different things. And maybe this is something I'm not going to pursue. And that might have saved you years and thousands of dollars um, in school where you've already made that affirmation um, as a senior in high school. And here's just a, just a quote from two years ago about the program that just speaks to the opportunity that I can provide. Even if your internship is in Worcester and you know just, just maybe taking the bus at UMass or driving to Worcester or just meeting new people, you really get to experience an authentic kind of real world opportunity in a short period of time. And it's a great way in your senior year. So I'm gonna talk logistics really quick. And I wanna to talk to you about the last four weeks. And please, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to type them in the chat and I will pause and field any questions that I need to field to make sure everybody's feeling really good about this and really clear about this. So the first question I always get in the four weeks, so from April 26th to May 21st, Marcucci, how many hours a week is the internship program? And the, the immediate answer to that is 25 hours, but it's pending AP classes. So because your AP class is connected to a college curriculum and you can potentially get college credit, you, we expect you to maintain and stay in that AP class. So for example, Maybe you take AP Psychology this spring semester, and let's say it runs A block. You would still go to your AP Psychology class, but after your AP Psychology class, your BC and D block classes, you would devote 19 hours of internship work for the week. So on a Monday through Friday schedule, you need 25 hours. And that's a combination of how many AP classes you have. And you can see I listed that for you. One thing students always, get hung up a little bit, um, you have the ability, you, just because our school is from 750 to two, does not mean the internship program is from 750 to two. So if you're working at a bank and that bank is busy on a Thursday and maybe that bank is open till six, you can work those hours. You don't have to work that 730 to two. Uh, 
Also the same thing with the Wednesday. On a Wednesday, if I can address that really quick, I'm not sure what Wednesday will look like for seniors. And I know there's some changes with the state, but if you have an open Wednesday, you, you could crush eight to 10 hours that day. And maybe you're doing, you know, three or four hours the other weeks to make, to, to make your 25. And this usually brings up some questions. So I just wanna pause for a second. Does anyone have any questions on the logistics of the 25 hours in the four week window? Yeah, I can ask a question. Fire away, TJ. What up, buddy? So is it still going to be 25 hours at the internship if you took an AP class like the first half of the year? No, sir. That's a great question. So those that schedule that I just showed you only pertains to your spring semester. So TJ, let's say you took AP Lit fall, but your current schedule, you have four non-AP classes. The expectation is you'd be with the Blackstone Valley Chamber of Commerce for 25 hours a week in those four week periods. Make sense? Yeah, thanks. Great. TJ, that was a great question. Any other questions on the logistics with the hours? I also have a question. Yes, please. Um, so Caitlin? for the 25 hours, does that include weekends? Like, can we get some of our 25 hours in on the week? So ideally, in an ideal world, the 25 hours is connected to your school. And that's a Monday through Friday thing. So really the majority of those hours really should be in that Monday through Friday. Now I know your job in particular, your internship in particular, may be a little bit weekend heavy. And that's something you and I can kind of talk about on the side. Um, but ideally, ultimately it's part of your time on learning hours and those should really fall Monday through Friday. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions on the logistics? All right, I'll keep going. And if you have another question, you can interrupt. You can just yell my name or something. So those are the logistics. I just want to quickly go over the academic expectations. So let's say you have zero AP classes and you're like, oh man, I, um, April 26th, here I go. I'm out the door. And that's absolutely true. You are. Each week, and I'll get to this at the very end when I look at the Google Classroom page with everybody. Each week, you're going to write me an email. Actually, it's a Google Doc. And in that email, you're going to give me like six to nine sentences on your experiences from the week. Basically, a weekly reflection. Part of that reflection, you'll also include your signed hours from your employer, verifying the hours that you signed off on. That's something the employer and I talk about, and you'll talk about with your employer as well. In the four weeks, my expectation is that you'll also write a thank you note or a thank you card to your employer, thanking you for that opportunity. You'll take a picture of that and send it to me. You complete two surveys that may take um, in total four minutes. And then there's the capstone presentation on May 24th. Uh, students, you may remember this was in the gymnasium and the seniors kind of lined up and we walked through almost like a, a science fair, but unfortunately we can't do that this year so we need to do a virtual presentation and I will talk about that at the end. But in the, in the four week window, these are your academic expectations for me. And you have to remember most of you in here, um, or you, know, you might have zero APs. So you're just working or doing your internship and then you're completing this, this side for, for me as well. As far as the program expectations go, I just posted today and I'll show you in a minute on the Google Classroom page, the application for this program. It's really important to complete that because it includes insurance policies. Most of you are going off campus. We need those insurance policies in case of any sort of accident. We can talk about that in a little bit. So I gave you a soft deadline of March 26th. Today's uh, March 9th. Um, realistically, it, it might take you and a parent or guardian about a half hour to complete the, the application. And then the hard deadline is April 2nd. I need it no later than April 2nd. Um, naturally, you want to maintain all your current coursework. You want to be in good academic standing. You want to be in good behavioral standing with the school. And then the last thing we do is a, a final sign off. It's a one page sign off that you'll give your current teachers where you return books, et cetera, et cetera. My professional expectations for you, um, like I said, this for the last six years, I've been really fortunate to work with students on this project. 
and the students are exceptional every year. And the professional expectations is you have to be professional. What does that mean? You, you want to be prompt. You want to be on time for your job. Uh, there's not that kind of leeway sometimes like we have at school where, you know, you miss a couple, you come in late a couple times and get a detention. In the real world, if you're later a couple times, you, you'll most likely lose your job. So you want to be prompt. You want to be cur curious, communicative, you know, be the part, dress the part, and be professional. So if you're working in the elementary school, you want to look like an elementary school teacher. If you're working in construction, then you're going to dress uh, like you're going to work construction. And then the last thing, and I'll pause for a second and give you a chance to fire away. So I'm not talking at you too much. Marcucci, what about my grade? Give me my fourth quarter grade. Well, I become your fourth quarter teacher, essentially, minus the AP class. So in your non-AP class, okay? So um, unless you have an AP class, uh, how do I, I wanna phrase that better. With the exception of AP classes, I become your fourth quarter grade. And your fourth quarter grade is a combination of what you see on the screen your weekly reflection and signed hours, your surveys, your employer evaluation will they'll evaluate you in your capstone presentation. And I take all those things, I use Google Classroom, so you'll see your score and that comes into an average and that becomes your score for the fourth quarter. So I just said a lot, I wanna pause and give people a chance to process and ask any questions if needed. Any questions out there? We feeling good, talk to me. Um, so do I also have to complete the, um, document, even though I've like already been there? Yeah, we, you should definitely complete that document. And that's something you and I just can talk about, um, okay. on the side. I sent you an email right before this meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for reaching out. Yeah, of course. Any other questions out there? Mr. Mark, can, I, can I jump in? Yeah, of course, of course. So I just want to stress um, about the academic expectations. So basically the way the program functions is throughout your entire school career, we tell you, hey, you have to do this math problem because you're going to need it in the real world. You have to listen in science class because you're going to need it in the real world. So this fourth quarter is us kind of putting our money where our mouth is and saying, you're going to use all the skills you learned starting way back in the elementary school, going all the way through the through high school in the real world. So you, mm -hmm. while you're not like, let's say you were taking civics class with Mr. Perrin, or you were taking video production with Lev, while you're not doing that actual thing, the skills that you were using in that class are the same skills that you'll need when you're employed. So that it's really important that you're keeping up with the academic expectations because that's kind of us, you showing the school and sort of like verifying that this is actually a worthwhile program to be in and that you're actually getting something out of it. Um, we have had, <clears throat> I'm sure Mr. Mark is going to cover this, a very small handful of kids who, you know, just fell behind and weren't doing the bare, like the, the, expect, the academic expectations are not a lot, right? A weekly email, you know, Leo Tufts emails, Mr. Marcucci says, hey, here's what I did in my, in my internship this week. That's not a whole heck of a lot, right? Um, but if you're not doing those things, then you do risk, run the risk of losing that internship. And we have pulled kids um, out of the internship. And then you have to go back into your class. You have to get caught back up on the work that you missed. So it is labor intensive. Thankfully, it's been a, less than a handful, right, Sergio? Um, of kids yes. we have to do that with. Yes. But it does happen. So we just don't want to um, not at least address that. But like, like Mr. Marcucci said, the program um, is super, super successful and you guys, um, will, I'm sure will get a lot out of it. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll speak to that for a second really quick. You know, we've had over 500 students complete this in complete transparency with everybody. We've probably had to pull maybe 10 students altogether for a, a couple of reasons, but we have had students pulled because they failed to meet the academic expectation. If you're a senior here, um, I can tell you, um, realistically you're looking at probably for me each week less than 20 minutes of work the capstone presentation will take you a little bit of time for sure but the weekly emails and the signed hours um i think you could probably do that in 15 minutes so it's not super burdensome but it's enough to kind of keep you in check and also allow you the opportunity to get that field work at the same time and if I can just jump in one more time, uh, many of the employers will give you 
20 minutes to get that email done while you're there. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So that's how that happens more often than not. Um, yep. Also, there's a question in the chat. What happens if, uh, what, what are the expectations for kids who don't do an internship? You're just finishing out your classes. So this, that's why this is not a requirement. You're not forced to go on internship. We don't want to force anybody to go on internship because we don't want to put you someplace and then you're like miserable and then the employer has a bad experience and you have a bad experience. Um, so if you don't want to do an internship, you'll just be in the classes. But at this point, Sergio can tell you, we're probably looking at 80% of the senior class um, has an internship, is planning on taking an internship. So the senior classes will just be very, very sparsely populated. Um, and what we always tell folks is the kids who um, choose not to do an internship, like, again, 100% your choice. It's just a lonely way to end your school career uh, because most of your friends are going to be an internship um, building a professional network that um, Sergio talked about. Will weekly, will, will weekly emails be submitted on Fridays? So I actually listened to my students the last couple of years and they actually do the following Monday. So if you kind of forget about this, the weekend, Kim, that Monday. So like, let's say the program starts April 26th, that weekly email will be due that Monday. So I think that's like May 3rd by 10 a.m. And I'll actually show you at the end, it's already all built into Google Classroom and I'll show everybody and walk you through that. But it's, we could start the internship pro uh, program tomorrow uh, from that kind of perspective. But that's a great question. And let me just make sure there's one other question out there. All right, perfect. Let me just show you the last couple of things and I will get you out of here unless you want to hang. We can hang too. All right. So we just put some questions. It's another great quote from Kara. So at this point, I want to pause for a second. And our school nurse, Miss Donovan, has been kind enough to sit in on this meeting. And I just want to give her the opportunity or you the opportunity if you have any questions related to COVID-19, and uh, we all understand it's a very fluid situation and changes by the day, but uh, Ms. Donovan's here to field any questions, if anyone has any specific questions in regards to that aspect. I think everyone's an expert by now. <laughs> okay. Um, that's, that's great. So if at any point, anybody that's in this meeting has any questions, you can just shoot me an email and I will get back to you right away. And I saw another question in the chat. Um, no, the internship program is not after school. And that's something you have to wrap your head around a little bit. So Ashlyn, if you're at the Barkwood Inn and you have no EP classes, you know, you, uh, you I personally would just go like nine to two, Monday through Friday, right? And that's your schedule. And you're getting your 25 hours and you're at the Barkwood Inn and, you know, you, you go there and you work really hard and if, maybe you get hired for the summer and it becomes your summer job. But it's not an after school thing. It can be an after school thing if you have a very tough schedule. If you have one or two AP classes, um, you can work after school. But if you have no AP classes, I would really encourage you to get those hours during the day. Okay, so for the last part, I just wanna show you our Google Classroom page, okay? And this is really, it's for the students, but I think the parent gardens can definitely get, get something from this as well. So the first thing I would say is make sure you are logged into this particular page. I checked it this morning. I believe I have everybody in, but if you don't have access to this, just shoot me an email and I will add you to the page. ASAP. Okay. So on the Google Classroom page, I know my students are very familiar with this, but if you go to classwork, here is the application I was talking about. So it's the first thing on there. Um, you can go through it, you know, print it, um, send it over, email it to me, whatever you need to do, but there's the application. As far as the weekly assignments, you can see the four weekly emails, uh, Kim, that you asked about. They're already posted and scheduled for release. And I give you the tasks and the assignment in each, each particular assignment, exactly what to do, and things to consider. The hours are built in there. You'll just click that Google Doc and then hit Submit. Okay, so for my AP line kiddos that are here that have me as a student, uh, student it's the same exact thing. Um, 
The exit ticket survey is already here, posted for everybody. Uh, the capstone piece I'm going to work on. Uh, it's not ready to be posted yet, but I will post that really soon. I'm actually making a video myself, a video tutorial to help you with the capstone assignment. And the last thing I just want to point out, at any time, you can click this. This is a live doc. And I'm, this is not my intention to call anybody out whatsoever, but you're just seeing this document as is. So, you know, these are our students and these are their placements. And as I gain or sometimes lose placement, it will, so Emily, I know she's here. We're gonna meet on Thursday and we're gonna find placement for Emily. But if you see your name and the placement next to it, you are good to go. And you can look at that at any point. That is there for you. I want to stop for a second and just field any other questions that people may have. Um, student and or parent guardian, any other questions floating out there? Let me just check the chat really quick. I said a quick one, Mr. Mokuchi. So on the days we have AP exams, so yep. On May 24th, I'm taking AP Calculus in the morning, and then right after that, I'm taking AP Physics. Am I exempt for my like internship? For yeah. That? So that's that's a great that's a great question. So that that's so part of this whole process. Yes, you are absolutely exempt that particular day. Um, but it just goes back to being communicative, and all, most of the employers have worked with us in the past, and that's just something you tell them. I wouldn't tell them the day before, but you know that Monday or leading up to like, hey Dash, I have two AP exams. I'm not going to be available on April, um, you know, May 24th, and they're going to be more than um, receptive to that. I emailed the employers separately. Um, I saw somebody say, should we let the employers know how many hours we we're working? Yes, absolutely. Um, but they should know how many hours you are working as well. Uh, the other thing I would say to you is if you haven't contacted your employer yet, like if you are placed, I'm just going to pick on Kyle because he asked the question. So like if, if I said, Kyle, have you reached out to Dash? And he's like, no, I haven't. You should definitely be in contact with that person. You should do a really quick introduction. I can help you walk you through that if you need help, but it'd be an email like, you know, hi, Mr. Berkner, my name is Kyle Mendoza. I'm a senior at Sutton High School. I'm so uh, excited to start the internship program with you on April 26th. I'll be working 19 hours a week because I have an AP class. Well, actually 13 hours a week, so I have two AP classes. And if there's anything you need in the meantime, please let me know. And that goes a long way. And that really just kind of speaks to the authenticity of the program. That's kind of how the real world works as we keep hearing this expression tonight. Um, but it really goes a long way uh, with the employer as well. And I saw a couple more questions in this chat and I'll just address them. Um, yeah, Aaron, I talked about that. So Aaron, you're de you're, you have 25 hours. Is 25 hours the maximum? Can they work more? Absolutely, they can work more. So Jim, I know Logan's at PV and my man, Nathan Henry, he'd like him to work 40 hours. So, and it, you know, and he's getting paid. So get, the, get that money, get that money, Logan. Um, when do the kids get their contact information to schedule their hours? Um, they should, they already have their contact information. If they've reached out to me and I've placed them, I usually send them that contact information. Does spring sports schedule affect hours? So th they just can't work after school right, if they're playing a spring sport, so then their hours have to be made in the day. So their their flexibility just goes from instead of like 7.30 to five, well now their flexibility might be 7.30 to two. Any other questions out there? Yes, uh, yes they can. Um, Angela Draper, yes. Um, and I'm going to work with the assumption Jamie uh, and I should be talking about a capstone piece. Absolutely. I actually haven't scheduled for a capstone piece. So that's something you should circle back to me and see. Ryan, do you have a question? Yeah. Um, if you're doing just a capstone, what is that going to look like? It, uh, obviously, it's not the same, but I, I just wanted to know what it might look like. So your capstone is something, so a capstone project for, for people who might be unsure what that is, that's basically if a student has multiple APs or their schedule is really tough, where they have an AP in the morning and an AP in the afternoon and they play a spring sport and it's just hard for them to get off campus, we offer a capstone piece. 
where you're gonna have to work independently. You can partner with a teacher. You can take online classes. You can do something project-based. Uh, we experimented this a lot last year during COVID-19. We actually continued our internship program with about 30 kids. And it was very much capstone centered where kids ranged from taking fashion de design classes in New York to learning sign language to starting their own woodworking company. So uh, Bri, that's something you and I should really talk about, but I, I would really encourage you to reach out to somebody like Mr. Stone, who's done some capstone pieces for engineering students, and he'll give you some projects to complete. And that's probably the way you should go. Any other questions? Uh, you've been great. I hope this was helpful. And you know, my, my big takeaway for you, this is a great opportunity. And I'm biased because I run, I, I'm, I coordinate the program, but I, I, I can't think of a reason not to do this. Um, there's so many wonderful benefits to this and it's a four week window and it's really quick and you can learn a lot and gain a lot of experiences in four weeks. So if you have any questions or apprehension or want more details, please do not hesitate to email me, but I will say time for me, it's, it's going by really fast. And if you don't have an internship placement, we really need to buckle down and find you one soon. And if you don't have one right now, that's okay. We can still find you one. I'm very confident in that. But we really need to get rolling because opportunities are starting to become more and more limited. So uh, that's my message to everybody. Mr. McCarthy, do you have anything else? No, I just want, I mean, I just want to thank everyone for coming out. I really hope um, you all enjoy the program. The, we've really worked hard to make the program really a big part of the school culture. Um, it, it was a shame last year when Mr. Marcucci placed 100% of the seniors and they didn't get the chance um, to benefit from it. And we're really glad that um, as things are starting, to, we're on the other side of this thing now and that you all are getting a, the experience to get out there. So we're really happy about that because you guys as a class have been tremendous. I have, you know, I just keep saying it. You guys have been phenomenal. I have zero complaints with the senior class and how they've handled this whole thing. So we will do whatever we can. Um, to make it work for you. Like Mr. Marcucci said, if you don't have one yet, you're kind of on the fence, but you want to get one, just go see Marcucci or email him and he will hook you up. He's got a hundred percent batting uh, average um, in six years. I, I keep saying that I'm going to jinx him at one point, but um, we want you to have a good fourth quarter for senior year. You guys have definitely earned it. And our motto is just trying to keep saying yes to as much th stuff as we can. So if you have any questions, email Mr. Marcucci, he's the man. Um, if he can't answer it, sometimes it's like, if it's like a logistical question, I can help. Uh, but we really try to be as flexible as we humanly can with the program because we want you guys to really benefit from it. We, Mr. Marcucci and I were just talking um, about a senior who graduated. When did he graduate? Oh, actually, TJ, you know, it's your, it's your brother. Nick is still um, eating off that internship that he hooked up with Miss um, Salvatore a long time ago, and he's still getting opportunities of it. So some years later, um, he's still getting opportunities. So it just shows the benefits of the program. Um, so we really hope you guys um, take advantage of it and have fun with it because it's a good time. And if anyone has any specific questions and you may be like, afraid to chat in this kind of format, I'll hang back as, as people exit and feel free to ask, ask away. All right. Thanks y'all for coming. I'm going to stop recording now. Um, if someone didn't, was able to make it, we'll um, post this on the internship site and folks can catch up with it there. Thank you all.